Illustrator on the iPad. It is finally here and it is awesome. My name is Tim Wilson from Red Rocket Studio and I've been working on the beta version of iPad Illustrator. And what I'd like to do now is to just take you through some of the most amazing features that they've put in there, give you a general overview of how it works so you can enjoy it as much as I have. Let's have a look around. What I'm going to do is this, this is the starting page and you can see some of the artwork that I've done in here. All of these, by the way, have been done in Illustrator on the iPad purely. There was no desktop version um, on these. So let's just go straight up over here into a blank document and perfect. Now, looking on the left hand side, you'll see that it's kind of like a cut down version of what you get on the desktop. So over here, we've got our basic selection tool, direct selection tool, pen tool. Now the pen tool is interesting because um, it works as a combination of add and subtract um, tools in there. The pencil and the pencil is in with the blob tool as well. And once again, the pencil tool has got some really nice features to it. So for a lot of these of these tools, when you go down to the bottom, like the pencil, if I click down here, I'll get a smoothing option um, in there. And we do have some other settings. So look out for the settings on the tools, not just on the left, but if you go up to the right hand side to the properties, you'll find once you've made the stroke, there are some properties um, on that as well. So you've got the pencil there, you've got the blob tool, and once again, we've got some blob brushes. Um, in there. And then we've got an eraser tool, which is like the, the blob tool. Your basic shapes are in here. The interesting one is they've actually made the default for the polygon tool a triangle, because how many, how many times do you actually need a five or six sided polygon compared to how many times you need a triangle? So you can just make a triangle like that. There's a little button over there and you could just go and change the number of sides on that really quickly. Um, the type tool is in there. The type on a path is slightly different to the desktop version. Down here, we've got our artboards, and then we've got some import options underneath that. Then on the right hand side, we've got our layers and the layers work very similar to the desktop version. We move down and we've got the properties, which once again, like the desktop version change as you click on different items. I'll show you some of these in a moment. Um, after that, we've got precision options, which are your grids, etc. Um, going down, there's a really nice little feature here, which is the Pathfinder equivalent. And it shows you what's happening with the Pathfinder, so you can actually see what will happen to your, to your shapes. And there's also a shape builder, if you prefer to use that. Edit options, down to the line options, We've then got object options, things like making clipping masks, grouping things together, some type options, down to path options, um, convert corners, delete points, and finally down to the one that, if you've seen anything about Illustrator on the iPad, it's gonna have been this, the repeat options, which is radial grids, which I'll show you in a moment. So let me go and open up a piece of artwork here and show you some of those in conjunction with, with them. Um, I'll just choose this little infographic over here. So the first thing that you'll notice is when you click on a shape, what you have is this little interactive bar along the bottom, a, a kind of a contextual bar. And in there, I can get to things like the opacity, I can change that. I can go in and I can change the stroke and you just drag these little stroke widths around. Um, you can change your stacking order in the layers by just dragging the slider rather than having to go to the layers panel and moving them up and down that way. We've got things like locking, um, grouping and copying. Now one of the things is we can copy things directly in there or you've got this little touch control and there's a primary touch which is the middle one and the secondary touch the outer one so if I do that I can just keep copying my objects. And then of course, there's all of the gestures. So two fingers to undo. So let's have a look at a few of these bits now. So if I go up to the right hand side, you can see my properties have now populated. And we've got things like the appearance option in there, the fill, the stroke, 
incidentally there's a lot a lot of that in here you could even get your libraries your CC libraries and on the right hand side we've got some gradients as well and we've got the linear the radial and the freeform gradient in here and then if I click on some type once again the properties change to show the type options and we've got both point and area type in here we don't have as many paragraph options as I'd like to see but hopefully that will come soon sometimes some of the terminology that they use in here is different uh, for example letter spacing rather than tracking or line spacing rather than leading but you get used to that then moving down here I'll just take two shapes put them over each other right I need to lock that so I'll click on the little lock at the bottom I'm going to select both of those and then let's go over here to the combined shapes now you can't really see that very well so what I'll do is I will just make these a totally different color and then let's go up to the combined shapes and you can see exactly what you're going to get from those and once again when we do it it's minus the front from the back it's it gives you it keeps both shapes in there you have to actually click convert to path to do a full cut uh, out or a full unite between them this is obviously something you can do on the desktop but it's not the default on the on the desktop like it is in here so <clears throat> let's go finally on to the radial repeat I'm going to take this little shape and just move it up to there down to the repeats the radial repeat which is the one that everybody sees you can click on that you've got some scaling options in here you can change the number of shapes in there you can go along and you can pull them further apart and rotate them around as you go and you can also choose what sort of section of those you want it looks a bit gimmicky when you first start with it I've, I've got to be honest when I first saw it I thought mm, how often I'm go and I'm go how often am I going to use that but seriously it's been very very good for so many projects where I just want to rotate something around really quickly the one thing that does appear to be missing in here especially when you first start are patterns because Illustrator on the desktop is so good with patterns but there is an option for that if you go over to your repeat and you go to your grid repeat you can then pull bits out like this to make a pattern you can then move the objects closer together either from the top or the side here and you can move them across and down as well if you want to offset them then you go into your properties and right at the very bottom you'll find we've got some offset options so we can offset rows and columns and you can then start to flip them as well if you need lastly up the top there is a view mode so you can go into outline mode if you prefer working that way and you will find with your outline mode it works the same if you've got a keyboard attached that uh, command Y is exactly the same on here as it is on the desktop we've got various options in the settings here and then over to the export where we can publish an export and you've got some different export options in there now although we've got AI in here this would be AI exporting it to a specific area if you just close down your document what it does it saves it to the cloud and then you can just go into your desktop version and open it straight away from the cloud um, if you are on your desktop version same again when you save it save as save it on the cloud and it will appear in here in your work area you can see I didn't save anything with that um, little graphic that I was doing and it just appeared straight in here I absolutely love this version of Illustrator I was really worried before I started to see the betas because I wasn't that impressed with the Photoshop version on the iPad but Illustrator I think they've done a stunning job and they're gonna keep pushing on with this they certainly listen to people so if you do have any requests just contact Adobe uh, the team directly 
tweet them, something like that. And um, I'm sure they'll, uh, they'll look into it. Do enjoy it, download it, it's part of your creative suite and um, I have so much fun with it. I've really enjoyed using it. <laughs>